sugar is healthy and natural and shit. As long as you eat less and move more, I promise you, you'll be healthier if you eat natural sugar. And shit. Today I wanted to talk about the politics on why we're fucked, why we've been fucked, and why it's going to be difficult, if not impossible, to unfuck ourselves. There are a whole lot of people that have a whole lot of money invested in our current standard American diet, in our hamster wheel of exercise, in our supplement-driven nutrition, because you're not getting it in your food, so you got to go down to the GNC and spend hundreds of dollars on that shit, on our health care system and why it's failing. We're going to go over this a little bit. My opinion on this, based on a few things, there'll be some links involved. And, you know, and then to top it all off, you're going to have your prescription to Big Pharma to get all of the pills you need to keep you alive while you keep eating less and moving more and eating the same standard American fucking fake food shit. And we got to snap the fuck out of it. No one's going to come and tell us this is the way to be healthy It's no one's best interest. It's not in the media's best interest because guess who pays for all of them lovely TV shows you watch? Even when you're watching streaming services like Netflix and whatnot, when you look in their productions, you're going to see product placement. You're going to see characters eating sugary shit. You are going to see subliminal advertising to that effect in movies, in TV shows. So the media isn't on your side. Nobody's really on our side but us. People who have woke up, became free thinkers, and decided the only way we can change this is from the bottom up. We're the ones spending the money that's driving all of this. When you go to the store and you purchase that shit, you're voting to keep it. That's exactly what you're doing. When you go into the grocery store and you buy a two liter of soda... You're telling Coca-Cola, Pepsi, all the soda industries, no matter what brand you're buying, that you still drink soda and that they should make more soda. But if the entire country stopped tomorrow buying soda, all those soda companies would go under or they would have to reformulate it and find something else to sell us because we've got to drink something, right? Well, they've already dipped their toe in the bottled water, so they're a little ahead of the game. But I'm sure they'll find ways to draw us back in once we realize sugar is the problem. And that's why we're fucked. And, you know, it's changes like that that won't happen until the majority of us are on board. You're always going to have the outliers. The same thing happened when smoking. You know, when we realized smoking was fucked. There are still people today that I know personally that smoke. Regardless of the health implications. That's how addicted they are to it. The same case is going to be with sugar. There's always going to be motherfuckers addicted to it. And the industry and the healthcare industry and the pharmaceutical industry and the health and fitness industries, none of them give a fuck about getting sugar out of your life because it keeps you in their hamster wheel. It keeps you Go into the store to buy more because the shit's addictive and it doesn't fill you up. Then you get fat. Then you start going to the doctor because you start getting all of the illnesses and all of the complications and all of the problems that come with metabolic syndrome. Or even if you don't get fat, you still get some of these other health issues caused by fatty liver, by you know insulin resistance, and all the other problems that arise when you overload your liver with fructose on a regular basis. And you still have to go to the doctor, whether you're fat or not. So before you skinny fucks think you're off the hook, you're not. You're not. You could be in there for cancer. You could be in there for heart disease. You could be in there for stroke. You could be in there for 
any number of diabetes. You don't have to be fat to get these diseases. And I would argue the reason you didn't get fat and you still got the disease is because you were moving more and maybe eating less. Or maybe you always move more. Some people naturally have a high metabolism. They constantly are moving. Even when they're sitting, they're like twitching and shit or they're playing with themselves or, you know, whatever. But, you know, you got to realize that 40% of normal weight adults have metabolic syndrome of some kind. High blood pressure, you know, it's all there. So don't, I just wanted to let, you know, skinny fuckers, they're going to point at me and say, no, you're wrong. Sugar is healthy. Meh, 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 meh. Fuck you. That's not how it works. All right. Sugar is not healthy. It's in fruit. Well, how much fruit are we supposed to get? If it was only around and only ripe during a short part of the, of the year, only edible during a short part of the year, how much fruit are we supposed to get? I believe fruit was here to be seasonal, to fatten us up for the winter, and get us through famines by providing us with plenty of fat to burn off when we can't fucking eat. That's what I believe the role of fruit was. And fruit back then is nothing like the genetically modified to have more sugar and more fructose in it crap that you buy at the grocery store today. So, you know, we gotta, we gotta wake the fuck up. Now, the reason I got triggered, as, and I want to read this to you, um, this was sent to me by uh, a, one of my patrons, and I wanted to, you know, it triggered me to talk about this subject today and why, how we got here and what we got to do to overcome it. All right, this was sent to me by a patron on Patreon by the name of Tony. He said, oh, on another note, I went to a family birthday brunch yesterday I sat in the living room reading while everyone else piled in the dining room. We set a plate for you in case you just want to eat fruit. Because fruit's healthy and, you know. No thanks, he said. Doctors just don't get it. Everyone looked at me like I was a ghost, even the non-family members. I could hear the hushed talking from the dining room. What? He's not coming? Oh, God. Whisper, whisper, whisper. One family member doctor said after brunch, we are worried about you becoming anorexic. This is a doctor, by the way. Hasn't heard of fasting? Really? Or have you been asleep for the last 15 years? Even though fasting's been around for thousands upon thousands, if not millions of years, if you look at it from an evolutionary standpoint. Oh, I'm sorry. Get triggered. Fucking doctors. I think they know everything and they don't know shit. They know how to fucking write a pill subscription and sell you some pills. That's all doctors seem to know nowadays. It's every time I encounter one of these motherfuckers, it pisses me off. Sorry. Back to the letter. My bad. I'll try not to get triggered again. I'm 5'8", 195 pounds at the time. I'm like, uh, thanks. I hope they don't commit me. And he put a little smiley face and shit. Afterwards, there was talk about Alzheimer's and how it is unpreventable and untreatable. Apparently, they didn't hear about the ketogenic diet either. So you got doctors don't know shit about fasting, don't know shit about ketogenic diet, clearly don't know shit about the endocrine system, hormones, and metabolism in general, and probably, you know, read some fucking, you know, human metabolism for dummies book in medical school to cover the nutrition and its effect on our health. All the while, our health is spiraled out of control. I was going to broach fasting and its benefits to dementia patients in a room full of doctors, but felt it was futile. And you were probably right, because those doctors sound like the type of doctors that think they know everything and that you don't know shit. And it's really the other way around. Because you've done your homework. I know you have because you're doing this. People don't just do this. They have to know some fucking proof that it's working. Some science to back it up. And that's what makes us try this. And then once we try it, we don't go back. I've been at this almost three years now. It'll be three years on my birthday. Because I think that's when I initially made the, the jump to, to do the fasting is for my birthday. Three years ago which is the 14th. And do I look 
fucked up, my health has drastically improved. I get nothing but compliments all the time until I mention how I did it. And then I get the strange looks, the are you anorexic look or any of that shit. And we're going to go over the difference between fasting and anorexia after this note. Uh, let's see. Last night I had band rehearsal and I was a little off and one of those guys asked if I was okay. I said, well, I hadn't eaten in five days. Well, you're going to ruffle some feathers with that. So I guess that might be it. The faces. What? Why? They showed concern. I explained that I've been doing and how I lost, I'm down over 70 pounds in the last three and a half months. The faces, the eyes from one to another to me, one said respectively, I think you've lost your mind. The joys of fasting. Just no, I don't know. I may break today and stabilize my weight and do another fast in a few weeks. 11 pounds is a good jump. Um, and then he asked for my thoughts. And, of course, on Patreon, I responded, um, which you you can get access to for a whole dollar a month. This kind of shit goes on on there. Yeah. Conversations and shit. Enough of that shameless plug there. You know, first of all, the difference between anorexia and fasting is anorexia is a mental disorder of self-image. You always think you're fat. You don't, you're deathly, mortally scared to gain weight. And you're obsessed with not eating. Period. Even after your body fat's gone, even after you've, you know, you haven't replenished or refed your nutrition, which is vitally important. And it's the big difference between fasting and anorexia. When you fast, you are planning to not eat for a specific period of time, sometimes even less because you shorten them if you don't make it to your goal. And then you eat the fuck out of whatever food you can afterwards. And that's kind of the point, is to give yourself a break, give you some access to the fat that you make every time you eat. And you do. You know, every time you eat, you're storing fat. That's just a fact of life. We don't burn everything we eat the moment we take it in. It all gets put away. And then we keep taking away from there. You know? And it wants that to be balanced. Your body wants that to to stay like this. It doesn't want tilt in one way or the other. And if you are on a ketogenic diet and you get this sugar out of your life, this should work properly. It'll be like, eh, eh, eh. like today, it's my eat day. I've had one meal and not even remotely hungry. I did just have that cookie there. And it was eggs and bacon was all I ate. So, you know, and I had some fat in my coffee today. I plan on maybe not eating until, you know, my vacation, till I arrive in, in, down in the Bahamas. So, or not the Bahamas, uh, the Caribbean or something. I don't know. One of them fucking islands down there and shit. It, this, this dogma has to change. This knowledge has to spread. We have to get the fuck out of this. Now, another thing that I came across, and you can find the link to this in the description the author of the book the big fat surprise which is a book i have read and is a good book i recommend it by nina tykoltz tykoltz something anyways in the description you'll find a lecture that pretty much sums up her book in you know a 30 minute digestible fashion um that will illustrate to you what we're up against in trying to change and it is going on right now this battle is being fought while we're sitting here on YouTube playing with ourselves. Tim Noakes has had an appeal to his not guilty verdict in his trial. That is ongoing in South Africa. The vegans are up in arms over here to try and keep us on a high-carb plant-based diet. And they have their tentacles deeply implanted in government, in all of our, you know health associations, in the FDA, they are up there lobbying for a high-carb, low-fat, plant-based diet that I believe we're not designed to eat. And I think it will be more of the same when it comes to our diseases. Now, I would argue that maybe in some versions of the vegan diet, 
there are, you know, healthy raw vegans, I would say, that could be healthy, but that's not what I'm talking about here. You ever walk through the vegan aisle? What do you see in that aisle? You see shit tons of processed foods, all with vegan, organic, GMO fucking shit painted all over the side of it and charged fucking twice as much while giving you half as much of a normal processed food with about as much health value as a normal processed food, except no animals were harmed in the making of that processed food. Could you imagine if the vegan diet became our dietary guidelines? What, how would that go? How do you think that we would survive? Because I believe that diet does not provide everything we need, nutritionally. That's backed by science, so before all you vegans stick it in my ass, I am here to say that Science backs this up. You're not getting all of the proper amino acids and proteins when you're consuming a plant-based diet. We weren't meant to just eat plants. You can go back through human history. Okay, without going too much further down that rabbit hole, but that is the current lobby in the United States that's going on along with the organic movement, and there is just a war against meat and fat still. And... We're still on that diet heart hypothesis, which I believe has, without a shadow of a doubt, been disproven scientifically through many, many studies, both controlled, you know, randomized studies, and of course the ever ubiqu ubiquitous fucking observational studies that are out there that have shown that cholesterol is not a good marker for heart disease, neither is you know, LDL as a whole. The better marker is when your HDL goes down and your triglycerides go up, you're going to have a grabber. And that usually happens in people that consume large amounts of fucking sugar, not fat. You don't understand. The sugar triggers de novo lipogenesis from the fructose in your fucking liver, which makes that fucking fat and it stays in your liver because fructose doesn't boost your fucking insulin your insulin spikes initially from the glucose part of the fucking thing but when that drops down you're still making fucking fat from the fructose you took in and guess what there's no insulin to shunt that over to your fat cells thereby it stays right there in your fucking liver creating hepatic liver insulin resistance and making your whole fucking life hell sometimes i don't know where all this comes from. It's like I'm possessed. Oh, I shouldn't have to explain this to a doctor or dietitian. If you are a doctor or a fucking dietitian or a personal trainer, you should be researching this shit. I am just an advocate here on YouTube for something that worked for me. I'm not a fucking expert. I have access to the same information that everyone watching this fucking video does. I have enough time to research it thanks to people supporting what I'm doing. And, you know, there's no excuse to be a professional, a doctor, a fucking dietitian, a nutritionist, or any of these motherfuckers. There is no excuse for you not to know this shit. If me, a truck driver, your average everyday fucking guy, can get on the internet and fucking see this shit, why the hell can't somebody who's making $150,000 a year having direct control over our health and wellness and whether or not we fucking live or die take a few minutes out of their fucking day every day to keep up with the science behind nutrition? They can't. You want to know why? It's all about the fucking Benjamins. They're disincentivized. Even the ones that have a good heart, that want to do good, they're not allowed. If they step out onto that ledge, one of the fucking big companies or financial interests is going to kick them right in the fucking back of the head and knock them off the ledge. That's what they're afraid of. So fear is keeping them in place. Money is keeping them in place. You can't do good science because if your science doesn't find what the food company and medical pharmaceutical industry company funded studies want you to find, guess what? You don't get fucking paid. You don't get the next study. 
So you know what happens when they find something that doesn't agree with the corporate interests or the fucking big sugar interests or the big pharma interests or any of these other fucking company interests? Guess what happens when they find something that contradicts? And it happened with the diet heart hypothesis. We've had these studies for years and they got shelved because they were afraid to step out onto that ledge because the people that were paying them to do the study would not like what they found. So they bury it. You never see it. Doesn't pop up on the health news segment on your fucking CNN. Doesn't show up on your Facebook. You have to dig and dig and dig and dig and dig to find these studies. The fucking good news is, is since this has gone viral, since this is spreading out, we are digging and we are sharing. And that's what I'm doing. I'm digging and I'm sharing and you should too. Until we can get... Uh, go to a party filled with people and not get people looking at us like we're stupid, like we're insane, like we're crazy, because we're not. We know exactly what the fuck we were doing. We have fixed our health issues compared to most of the people who are pointing their fingers saying, that's nuts. We got to send you to the fucking mental institution. You're fucked up in the head. Meanwhile, that person probably has fatty livers, probably growing some nice healthy cancer inside their body, is probably on their way to fucking heart disease, diabetes, stroke, any number of these things, and they're going to probably happen in their 50s, maybe their 60s, uh, or even their 40s and 30s nowadays. You notice how that's inching downward? The trend's going down. A lot of us have family members that didn't make it to 60. Imagine that. How the fuck that happened? Chronic disease caused by sugar. Hello. You know, this book that I'm, I'm reading now, Pure White and Deadly by Yudkin, knows, you know, it's a little bit rusty with some of the science, but this was before I was born, this book was written. He updated it in the in 1980. This is the revised copy that Dr. Lustig was nice enough to republish because it got fucking buried in favor of our standard American dietary guidelines, which were put in place in the early 80s, but founded with Ansel Keys' diet heart hypothesis. He went to war with Ansel Keys and lost, and they buried him. They made him complete fucking heretic. That nobody wanted to listen to because we were all too addicted to sugar to begin with. But God damn it, somebody should have listened. Because we would have averted so many people fucking dying. From chronic disease, from diabetes, from all of these preventable illnesses that shouldn't happen until your 80s. And the reason they happen because you're 80s is because you are still taking in sugar and carbs. It, the dose determines the poison, and we are currently fucking overdosing on the shit. And, you know, that that's the other painful part about our fucking health care. We have been debating health care for quite a while now. We got Obamacare was the big thing. Now we got Trump care. You know, everyone's trying to fix the health care system financially. You can't fix it financially because it cannot sustain this level of chronic disease that we are at today if we do not fix our motherfucking health we are not going to fix our health care system doesn't matter if it's socialism doesn't matter if it's free market doesn't matter anything insurance can't afford to do it and they they know it that's why your deductibles are so high so there's no way you can fix the healthcare system by fixing it with finances. Even if you gave us a 75% tax to give everyone free health care, we still would not be able to afford the level of obesity, disease, and, and metabolic diseases that we are currently at. Not to mention all the pharmaceuticals that are in. And there are people in this country getting rich off of us being unhealthy and being sick and they don't want to fix it they just want to keep us live enough long enough to keep giving them our fucking money they don't care how we feel they don't care whether or not we have to you know have trouble getting out of our chair if we can get in on our car if we take up four seats on a plane they don't give a fuck as long as you're alive and sending them the money so 
That's how I feel about it. I don't know. This is kind of a political fucking video without siding for it. Because to be honest, all sides of the political spectrum seem to be on the same page when it comes to our health and what we're supposed to eat. I have not heard one politician, not one, mention our diet or our food composition. There was the whole Obama eat less, move more campaign that failed after so many uh, of those corporate interests stepped in and said, hey, motherfucker, you need to slow to your roll. All right. We're paying the bills here. And you saw that shit disappear. But it was still more of the same junk science. Eat less, move more. It's just not how it works. You can't take a system that's designed for energy balance, skew that energy balance, and expect to keep the result. It's not going to happen. Eat less, move more is not a fucking viable thing. You're going to argue that with me. Some of you are just clinging to that calories in, calories out shit. Having done both, I can tell you I prefer to not have to count calories. I prefer my body to do its fucking job when I'm not actively trying to lose weight. Thereby, I don't have the slow weight creep. I don't regain the weight. You know, my weight fluctuates within a same 10-pound window no matter what I do now. I'm not going to be journeying back up to 255. That's gone. I will never see that weight again. I can confidently say that. Will I see 210 again? Yeah, if I start carving up, maybe. But I'll probably realize what the fuck I'm doing and jump back into where I'm supposed to be. I don't plan on doing that. But that's a worst case scenario. Because I've done that once already. I switched from keto to carbs. I went back up to 210. I said, well, fuck, I can't keep doing this. And then I went back down. How many times we got to keep doing the same shit before we figure out we're doing stupid shit? So, check out Nina Techholtz's speech, um, Good Calories, Bad Calories by Gary Tobbs, another book I've read. Also, a good subject on the politics behind our problem. And what we need to do is, once, like I said, to overcome this, we need to do the research ourselves, not just listen to other researchers. See the proof ourselves. Try the shit ourselves. Get the miraculous level of weight loss and health marker improvement and get us off our medications ourselves. And then once we do all of that, then we need to show everyone around you personally in your personal life who is doing it wrong, you need to let them know every opportunity you get. I mean, don't like beat them to death with it, but when it comes up, you need to let them know. And that's my advice for the guy who wrote that comment. I would have been that they would have hated me by the end of that. I would have been triggered. I would have been like, are you serious? You're a doctor and you don't know how the endocrine system works? You you don't know about metabolism and hormones? You you don't understand how our you know, do you even know about glycogen and fucking fat storage and insulin? Do you know any of that, motherfucker? I would have been all over their ass. I, you know, they would have hated me by the end because I would have made them feel stupid. Because they would not have had the knowledge to combat what I was bringing to the table with science. And that's what happens. They get defensive and they shut the fuck up. And that's how you got to do it. And for people who don't, who aren't medical professionals, you got to be a little bit more nice. But I'm a little harsher on people that should know this stuff and don't. And for non-medical professionals, you just got to keep showing them how good you feel. You tell them how great you are, how you're doing. You look healthy. You feel healthy. You've lost the weight. You've kept it off. Meanwhile, a lot of them are going on that weight creep up as they get older and they see, and they're going to get to the same threshold us old fucks got to, and some of you young folks who got fucked up a lot earlier than us older motherfuckers managed to, because you had a higher level of sugar than even we did. You know, they're going to get to a point in their life where they're going to have to make a decision. Do I continue being fat and sick? 
or do I right the ship and go back the other way? And that's what I've done. And I've shown everyone in my life that I've done that. And even people that are stubborn about this, like my mother, are starting to turn around. My mother asked me for that fucking ketogenic food list I posted the other day. I'm giving it to her. Do I think she'll stick to it? I don't know. I've been trying in the past and failed to get her to convert. She's old. It's hard to tell somebody who has been told this their whole life and have eaten this way their whole life and is in their 60s already with having already had a stroke and other health issues and blood sugar problems. It's hard to, to tell someone that has this dogma in there that they need to write the ship. My mother's overweight too, by the way. And, you know, I told her you need to write the ship. You need to turn it around and you'll live a healthier life while you're old. You will feel better. You will live longer. You won't be in the goddamn house. She hates all the medical bills. She hates the prescriptions. She's on several prescriptions. Mostly for pain, for a back injury. You know, and then there's people claiming that fasting, I haven't researched this, but I, you know, if I ever get fucked up I'll, or injured, I'll try it. But, you know, there's claims that fasting helps with pain. I don't know. I haven't explored that. I haven't researched that either. But the point is, is she could live a better quality of life if she made the changes in health. But a lot of people associate the sugar with quality of life. Oh, I got to be able to eat the good foods. It's the only good thing I have. They don't realize that a whole nother world opens up when you remove the roller coaster ride that is sugar from your life. You don't get as depressed. You don't get as stressed out. You don't get as anxious. You don't get as angry. You smooth. You mellow out. I went over that in a previous video. And the more we can show that to people, especially people who are suffering, people who already have arrived at the beginning of the end of their metabol metabolic damage and their disease, if we show them that there is a, a way out, a way to reverse it, or at the very least stop it from going forward, that is where we start to right the ship. That is where we start changing things from the ground up. That's where we make our purchasing decisions. That's where we go into the store and vote with our dollars on what we want and what we don't want. When Sweden changed their diet, their national dietary guidelines to the ketogenic diet. Oh yeah, there's a whole country on board there. There's probably a couple other ones. I don't know. I haven't looked lately. They, they ran out of butter. The price of butter skyrocketed. What do you think they're going to be doing? They're going to be trying to make more butter and shit. Exactly. And that is the kind of change initiated when the market changes. And as long as we are in a capitalist society and we don't get corrupted by the information that's given to us and fed to us and advertised to us and shown to us on news and shown to us on so social media and through advertising. If we can ignore all of that, look at the science, look at how our body works and eat appropriately, they'll have no choice but to reformulate to something that fits in our dietary guidelines, our personal dietary guidelines. We don't have to eat the way the government says to eat. But it damn sure, because the government said it's that way, it's difficult to eat the way we eat as a ketogenic person. Vegans have more leeway than we do now. They do. I envy vegans. You can go to vegan restaurants. I can't go to a keto restaurant. A restaurant where I can walk in and know I will not overconsume carbs while I'm in that motherfucker. I have to look the menu like a fucking scientist. I have to say, well, there might be sugar in that. I got to be careful with that. Got to get my dressings on the side so I don't risk overdoing sugar if they put sugar in it. You know, it's a whole fucking thing. I would love to have a restaurant that I could walk into and know the carb content of every fucking thing I eat and that it's high quality fat, not vegetable oil. That is, there's no restaurants like that and there won't be until the market changes. And that is our only power here. We are not going to vote this out. We are not going to legislate this. We do not have enough pull. We are not these big companies and corporate interests that have millions and billions of dollars to throw 
at the government to get their way. We're just the little guys. And the way those companies made that money is from us buying their shit. So the only power we have is to not buy their shit. Ever. Don't eat their shit. That means someone else had to buy it. If you go to a party enough times and at the end of that party the whole cake is still there and all the sugary shit's still there and all the unhealthy shit's still there, guess what's going to happen at the next party? They're going to be like, dude, I had we had all this food, nobody fucking ate it, I can't eat it all, it's fucking, it would kill me. But, you know, eventually you're going to go to the party and there's going to be healthy shit all over the place. It's how it works. It's a supply and demand thing. That's our only power. And spreading our knowledge amongst ourselves. Because it's not going to come from the top down. This is a ground up grassroots movement. To better our health. And we just got to fucking step up. And make it happen. So. I'm going to be out of town. For the next five days. I will try to post. Or six days. Is it six days? I get get back next Tuesday. I leave out tomorrow evening. So, I will try and post. I will keep try and keep posting my daily uh, updates and blog on my Patreon channel. I will be filming multiple videos while I am down there, and including vo- vlogging my trip, hopefully. Um, I'll do the best I can. I don't know the rules everywhere that I'm going on what I can and can't do. I'm bringing some camera gear. Obviously, since it is a photo shoot gig. So I will be down in the tropics, sitting on the beach, you know. Well, I obviously am going to be doing photography too, but when in between shooting, I can't shoot the entire time. I'm going to relax and enjoy some time and swim in the ocean for the first time in my life. So there's not going to be a lot of video content. So that's why I'm leaving you with these couple videos and... I will try and post a daily vlog style video or is it just one and done on the camera from my phone if I can. It really all depends on the Wi-Fi quality. I'm nervous as fuck that the Wi-Fi is just not going to be able to cut it as far as uploading videos. And if that's the case, I'll do what I can. I'll also post an update or two on Facebook to let everyone know how I'm doing there with maybe some pictures um, so if you're not, if you don't like my Facebook page, it's it's down there in the description. So you can go there and uh, like that. I tend to post articles and other videos from other people that I come across that I get triggered by and stuff like that. And um, that's where we're at. But remember, I'm not a motherfucking expert. I'm just a motherfucking asshole. So have a nice motherfucking day. And she it. Oh. Before you go. There's a motherfucking like button. Somewhere. Click that. And then somewhere near there is a subscribe button. There's even a bell if you like want me to annoy you every time I put up a fucking video. You, you click all of that shit. And I can make more of this shit. Because I can spend more time making this shit. Because you guys are watching this shit. And also on Patreon, if you guys choose to become contributors there, you also enable me to make even more shit. Because I want to make shit for a living. Some would argue I already do. I go to the bathroom a lot. Just not today. Goddamn ketogenic diet. Thank you for those of you who do contribute. There won't be a live show this week. I just don't have time to do it. I have... It's to scramble to get all my shit together. I still haven't done that. I still gotta go buy shit for this trip. Um, so it's I'm a little overworked. Plus I got a film project I'm gotta finish up editing on tonight too. So I'm a busy motherfucker. It's Halloween and I'm gonna be working the whole time in this little room. But that's the life I live, and I it's better than being a truck driver. Have a nice motherfucking day. Again. And shit.